And now let's move on and talk about creating a provider virtual data center. Now, a provider virtual data center or provider VDC combines compute and memory resources of a single vCenter server resource pool with the storage resources of one or more data stores connected to that resource pool. A provider VDC is really the source for all other organizational VDCs. So first you have to create a provider VDC and then that's going to be the source for all organization VDCs underneath. So the organization VDCs will be contained inside the provider VDC. So think of it like this. If you were a public cloud provider, and let's say you had three different tiers of service. You had gold, silver, and bronze. You could, for example, create provider VDCs called gold, silver, and bronze, and then you could create a customer organization virtual data centers inside each one of those uh, provider virtual data centers so that the organizations could have those three different tiers of service. Or maybe they just subscribe to one tier of service, so they just have an organizational VDC inside the bronze provider VDC. Anyway, we need to first create provider VDCs, or at least one, and that's going to link to a single resource pool from a single vCenter server. In other words, you've got this resource pool, which is part of a DRS cluster. In that DRS cluster, you have at least two hosts uh, so that you can take advantage of HA and DRS. So the provider VDC would link or connect to that resource pool inside a DRS cluster. That's typically how it's done. Let's say that you've got one management DRS cluster where you run, let's say, DNS and vCenter and the vShield manager. And then you've got these other resource DRS clusters. And each of those resource clusters may have different qualities of servers. They might have really powerful servers in the gold resource pool or the gold DRS cluster. And then down the line all the way to the bronze resource cluster, which is just maybe some older servers with some you know, local SaaS storage. You can create a new provider VDC by going to the Manage and Monitor tab, then clicking on Provider VDC and then New Provider VDC. Or you can use the Quick Start, which is the option that we'll choose. Let's go over to the vCloud Director web interface. Here in the vCloud Director web interface, underneath the Quick Start on the Home tab, I'm going to choose to create a new provider VDC. I'll click on that. That's the second choice there on the Quick Start menu. And we need to give this provider VDC a name. We're going to call this new provider VDC the Wired Brain Coffee Company Gold VDC. So for a description, I'll just type in wiredbraincoffee.com's gold level provider VDC. So it's going to be enabled by default. And because these are brand new ESXi, five servers. We can use hardware version 8. There's not a mix of vSphere 4 in this cluster. I'll click Next here, and then we need to select a resource pool. We're going to do that first by selecting the vCenter server, and then here's the resource pool that was already created over there in the vSphere virtual infrastructure. It's the Wirebrain Coffee Gold number one resource pool. It is DRS and HA enabled. Inside there are two ESXi 5 hosts, and they're ready to go to provide the highest quality of resources that they are capable of to our internal departments and customers here at the Wired Brain Coffee Company. So I'll click on that. And right now we don't have any external networks to add. We'll be doing that later. I'll click Next here. And now we need to add some storage. I'm not going to use local storage. I'm just going to use shared SAN storage. It's the highest storage we have. I'll click Add here. So it's going to have access to these two data stores. And no, I notice now that one of my data stores is not VMFS5. I want to go in and enable that to make sure that they're the same. I'll click Next here. At this point, we need to have the ESXi host in that DRS cluster prepared for vCloud Director. And that means really that the vCloud Director agent needs to be loaded on them. It's really easy to do. You can do it all in one place right here. We can just type in the root username and password for those two ESXi hosts. And then when the provider VDC is created, an agent will be loaded on each of those two ESXi hosts. I'll click Next here. We're ready to complete, so I'll just click Finish. And notice now uh, it says Create Another Provider Virtual Data Center. That means we've already created one. So let's go into Manage and Monitor. 
and then into provider virtual data centers and there's the WBC gold it says right now that it's creating the provider VDC hopefully that completes successfully we'll come back and check on it if we look down here we've got access to the WBC gold resource pool if we check on our hosts uh, we've got two hosts and we're currently installing Let me expand this out we're installing the agent on this host so it says the status is running this could take a couple minutes here so I'm going to pause the video be right back as soon as these hosts are ready to go okay I'm back and after a few minutes the vCloud director agent failed to load on both of my hosts if your installation were great then no problem you can breeze on by this but quick troubleshooting tip here if your installations of the vCloud director agent failed here's a couple of things to check first off the hosts have to be able to be put into maintenance mode so that the agent can be loaded so if you go over here to the vSphere client you can check on the status of these hosts see what virtual machines are running on them if they can't be vMotioned off onto another host in the cluster then the host can't be put into maintenance mode and the agent won't be able to be loaded so let's see this host here has got two virtual machines on it this host has no running virtual machines so let's check back on agent number one or host number one and the agent there first if we click on host number one and we go up here and click on the little gear I'll go down here and click prepare host we will type in the root username and password and I'll click OK and it says it's installing on host one we'll make sure it's installed successfully on host number one before we move on and try to resolve the problem on host number three if we go over here to the vSphere client notice that the host is now in maintenance mode I'll click on the task here said it successfully entered maintenance mode it should take just a minute to install that agent and then the host will come back out of maintenance mode okay we exited out of maintenance mode now let's go back to the vCloud director web interface uh oh it looks like it cannot prepare host let's click on that and it says that enabling host spanning on the host failed to enable host spanning select repair from the host menu so I'll say OK here. Let's go up to the little gear. Let's go down and let's repair the host. And now we're repairing. We'll go back and check on the status here. All right, we repaired the host. We've got a little system alert here now. But notice it says that the host is enabled, it's ready, and it's available. Let's click on system alerts. And it just says that host spanning configuration on this host is not up to date. Repair the host to synchronize. We'll handle that later but at least the host is enabled ready and available let's also select to repair this host host ESX i3 I'll repair that one as well okay now host number three is enabled ready and available we still have that system alert about spanning host spanning configuration is not up to date but according to the frequently asked question that should clear after a few minutes so if we go back up here besides hosts we also have data stores we also have resource pools we have our vCenter server and we have a provider VDC status on that is good we could also go in let's say we were a service provider here we could go in and we could add more provider VDCs so we could go from gold and we could also add silver and bronze let's say to have different tiers or if we had different clusters let's say we could add cluster for human resources another one for finance another one for development let's say or maybe our company has different divisions we could have East West divisions and European division and Asian division so we can have different clusters that we manage here and we could label them as different provider virtual data centers all right so with that let's go back to our slides and before we wrap up this lesson let's first talk about creating a virtual machine deployment template now this is jumping a little bit ahead because we haven't created uh, organization VDC's we haven't deployed or created any V apps yet but I wanted to mention this as a side note because if this affects you then you need to know about it if it doesn't affect you then you can just forget about it for now basically with vCloud director just like with vCenter and vSphere when vCloud director goes to perform 
guest customizations on virtual machines that you deploy if those virtual machines are older Windows guest operating systems, basically Windows Server 2003, 2000, or Windows XP, then you must create Microsoft System deployment templates or uh, sysprep deployment packages on each cloud cell in your installation. So during installation, vCloud Director places some files in this sysprep folder on the vCloud Director server host. That sysprep folder is down here, opt VMware Cloud Director deployment package creator, and the script that it has in there is create sysprep package.sh. And what you would need to do is see VMware Knowledge Base article 105593, which talks about this as it relates to vCenter, or Duncan Epping's article over at yellowbricks.com, and it has links to the sysprep files for your particular operating system and your particular service pack of Windows. I'll show you those in just a second, but what you would do is copy those sysprep files that you download from Microsoft onto the vCloud Director server, then you would run this script on those files. Then you would restart VMware vCloud Director using the VMware-VCD space restart. And you would need to do this on each cloud cell that you copy the files to. So let's go over to those knowledge base articles and Duncan Epping's article. I'll show you what I'm talking about and then I'll show you where it is that this script is located in case you need to do this for older Windows operating systems. Now if you're just running Windows Server 2008 and Windows 7 in your vCloud virtual infrastructure, don't even worry about this. Just skip to the end of the video and you don't have to think about this. But keep it in the back of your mind because if someone brings in a Windows XP or 2003 virtual machine that you need to bring up inside vCloud Director, then suddenly you'll need to be aware of this. The first blog post I'd like to show you here is from VMware Knowledge Base article. The Knowledge Base article is uh, number 1005593, and this talks about sysprep locations, files, and versions. And if we scroll down here, this is actually about VMware vCenter, but the same concept applies. What it does is it tells you the sysprep directory where you need to actually store these files when it comes to these older operating systems like Windows XP, 2003, and 2000. It also points out down here that starting with Windows Vista, all the way up to Windows Server 2008 and Windows 7, sysprep files are not needed and it's not relevant really, it's not applicable. Another important blog post here is from Duncan Epping. He actually has links to each of these sysprep files so you can click on one and then you can just save these. What you do is you execute this and you get a bunch of files off of that and then you would copy that over to your vCloud director server and place them in that sysprep files folder. Let's go over to the console prompt on your vCloud Director server and I'll show you exactly where you would put the files and then you execute a script on them. So here on the console of the vCloud Director virtual appliance, or you can SSH to it of course, I'm just going to cd into slash opt slash VMware. I'll do an ls and you can see in here there's a folder called vCloud Director. I'll do an ls. And then inside here, there's another folder called Deployment Package Creator. We'll do an ls inside here. And check out this script right here called create syspreppackage.sh. So you actually want to run this script from the same location that you've placed the sysprep files. So just to review, let's say that you SCP'd the files for the sysprep packages that you downloaded into the home directory for root. And then you would use the full path to run this script create sysprep package.sh. That would create the sysprep package that's needed for those older operating systems. And then after that, you'd need to restart the VMware vCloud Director services. So that's what you need to do for some of these older operating systems if you're going to be using those inside your vApps. If not, then you don't even have to worry about this. You use the newer operating systems and you'll stay out of trouble with sysprep packages. So with that, let's go back to our slides. All right, so that concludes our little detour on creating a virtual machine deployment template for older versions of Windows. So let's wrap up now what we covered in this lesson. I started off by giving you an overview of VMware vCloud Director Administration. From an administrator's perspective, you log in, you've got the Home tab there, you've got Quick Start, you've got your tasks that you need to do to set up vCloud Director, 
You also have the Manage and Monitor tab and the Administration tab. There's a lot inside those tabs, and that's really where you'll spend most of your time as a vCloud Director Administrator. From there, I moved on and showed you how to connect vCloud Director to vCenter and vShield. That's really the first thing you have to do to get started using vCloud Director is connect it back to vCenter. I also showed you how to add the license for vShield, and we even added a vCenter license over there to ensure that things would stay running after the evaluation period. Next up, we created a provider virtual data center, the Wirebrain Coffee Gold Tiered Provider Virtual Data Center. This is going to provide resources from the cluster running over in vSphere of at least two hosts running DRS. They've got a cluster. This is where the resources are going to come from for all the virtual machines that are going to be deployed inside vCloud Director. Once we created our provider virtual data center, the agent was installed on our ESXi servers. We had a little bit of difficulty there, but we got through that and learned some troubleshooting. Now we have data stores, we have hosts, we have vCenters, we have resource pools, and we have a provider virtual data center. Of course, we could add more provider virtual data centers if we need to, but that's really all we need to do to get started with vCloud Director. And then finally, we ended the lesson with a discussion on creating virtual machine deployment templates for older versions of Windows. If you need to do that, you need to make sure that you download the sysprep files from Microsoft. You can use Duncan's links there, and then once you do that, put them on the vCloud Director server, and then run that script called create sysprep package.sh on those deployment files. If you have newer versions of Windows, like Windows 7, even Vista, and Windows Server 2008, you don't even have to worry about it. And that wraps up this lesson on vCloud Director Setup. Thanks for watching.